Good morning and welcome to this week's Your Soul Matters broadcast. The Your Soul Matters broadcast is a ministry of the House of Deliverance Church. I'm your host, Tatiana Cody. It is my hope that this broadcast and the message you're about to hear will inspire you, encourage you, and convince you that your soul truly does matter. It matters to God, it matters to us here at the House of Deliverance Church, and we hope that it matters to you. Without further delay, let's welcome our speaker this morning, Minister Taraja Kaufman. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Good morning. There are many frustrations that come with having to wait. Whether you are waiting for a short period or a long period of time, waiting can bring about some form of frustration. Weariness may not happen when you have to wait in traffic, at the doctor's office, or even when you're on hold with the IRS. While we are somewhat perturbed, we still do what? We still wait. Eventually, the traffic picks up, right? Eventually, your exit comes, you're next to, to go. When you're at the doctor's office and they call your name, you're excited, you're like, yes. I'm ready to go in. And how about when you're on call with the IRS? There may have been a time you call them and they say your, word, your wait is an hour and 50 minutes. You hang up, <laughs> but you eventually do what? Call back. You call back. <laughs> And guess what? You don't hang up because you got some business to take care of. You, you need some answers to some questions you may have. My scripture uh, text will be coming from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And I'll be reading the King James Version. And it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. No matter how long the wait, there's always a struggle when we have to wait, especially people of God. When we have to wait on God for something, there's a war that goes on within us. We start off with why, we go from why to when, and the list goes on and on. This was a promise God gave to us. It's a promise that offers us hope. He's telling us in this waiting season that while we're waiting, he's going to renew our strength. The word wait in this text means to hope for and anticipate. While the word renew means, the Oxford Dictionary Version says, it means to resume an activity after an interruption. Another meaning is to restore freshness, vigor, or perfection to make new spiritually or regenerate. I personally believe the struggle comes from our disappointment when we've been put in a position to wait on God. Maybe you find yourself on the opposite end of not waiting on God. You may be in the position right now where you've just given up altogether because God did not answer you when your trial first came. No matter how minor the trial is, no matter how major the trial is, you've given up altogether, forgetting that with trials, they warrant some form of evolvement. It comes from uh, the, the holding pattern. When you're in a holding pattern and you're waiting on God to answer a prayer or come through for you, you forget that I used to believe that God could bring me out. I, I used to uh, quote the scriptures that say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Greater is he that sent me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All of those scriptures, somehow or another, they got lost. Because you started looking at a clock. You started looking at the time frame. Lord, when are you going to come through? When are you going to come see about me? Lord, I've been doing everything you asked me to do. I've started preaching. I've started witnessing more. I've started doing everything that I thought would have gotten your answer. What happens when he doesn't come through and you're still in this waiting pattern? In the season of waiting, we do get tired. We exhibit frustration. We have stress. We have anxiety. And we have worry. I want, if you will, to go in your mind to when 
the trial first came, whatever you're waiting on God for, go back to the first time that the trial came. How was your mindset then? It may have looked scary in the beginning. It may have been frightening. It may have caused you to want to run and hide. But there was something in you that said, just stick it out. Because you knew God came through the last time. You remember how he picked you up the last time. You remember how he, he showed up and showed out the last time. Mm -hmm. You hold on to dates when things happen. I know for me, I, I, a couple of sermons ago, I talked about a trial I've been in. And I'm still yet in it. Okay, so I got the date that it happened. I know what you're going through because I experienced it. I didn't all of a sudden wake up one morning and say, oh, Taraja, you can do this. Oh, you can go further. Just hold on and hold out. No, I had moments of weakness. I had moments of when I went to God and said, why did you do this to me? Why did this happen to happen to why did this have to happen to my family? When are you going to come through for me? Lord, they're watching me. Lord, you got to do something. The people are looking at me. But do you know? God, he didn't answer me verbally. What he did for me? You know the strength that this scripture is talking about? God began to renew my strength. He began to put some things in my mind to remind me. The Taraj, I've always been here for you. This thing is not going to kill you. When you woke up on November the 6th, after this trial happened, that was to tell you you were not going to die. You got to walk through it and you got to go through it. This message is to encourage that person who's on the other side and you decided I quit. Your trial happened October 17, 2020. It's October 17, 2021 and you're still getting that trial. You got to get up from that place of not believing God will come through for you. Right In this moment of waiting on God, God know what you can. Yep, yep. He's offering yep. mercy. Yep. He's offering grace. He's offering hope. God will come through for you. Yes, he will. I said eight years ago, here I am standing. In my mind, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I thank God for my mind. Because if I didn't have my mind, I couldn't offer you hope. I couldn't tell you about this great God that will come through for you. This great God that will come through for you. This great God that wants to grow you up. This great God that wants to elevate you to the next level. How can he do it if you're waiting but not waiting well? I forgot to mention the topic. The topic of this sermon, oh, hallelujah, the wait will be well worth it. That is the topic. The wait will be well worth it. You can't look at the trials that God brings up on you and place up on you as some form of hatred that he has towards you. You can't look at the trials that you're faced with as if God has counted you out. He's not counted you out. He's only looking to mold you more. Pull out of you the things that you yet know, don't know that's in you. Maybe you had an issue with not being next. Not being uh, next in line to go forth. This waiting will uh, birth in you a spirit to be more kinder. More appreciative. Looking at the next person. Congratulating them when it's their time. Because you know your name is coming up next. Waiting with a good heart. Waiting with prayer. Waiting with fasting. Waiting even when you get weary. When that weariness comes up on you. Talking to that weariness. I had moments of having to talk to the weariness. Sometimes my best friend can talk me off the ledge. Sometimes hearing my pastor preach. It, 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 I was in my own thoughts. I was in my own mind. And I was destroying the weight. I was messing with the weight. But when I got out of myself and I said, you know what? It is what it is. Yes. God was good yesterday yes. when my family was together. Yes. God is good today yes. while my family is apart. Yes. I had to look at that thing because guess what? God knows what's best for each of us. Yes. Like he knows what's best for you. Yes. God does not bring and wish harm upon you. This thing, as I said, it wishes to uh, birth in you. Things about yourself that you didn't know you had. Maybe this thing is for somebody to see that they can make it. Like I said a year ago, you've been waiting on God to operate and move in your situation and move on your behalf. Your followers, it may have decreased your influence because of your negativity, your complaining. 
<laughs> I gave you the definition of what it means to be renewed that this text was talking about. The text talked about an interruption when, you, when something's interrupted. If you find yourself on the opposite end of waiting on God and you've given up, there was a break in your waiting, right? You can now come back and say, Lord, forgive me. Yes. I chose to wait wrong. I chose to wait complaining. I chose to wait frustrated, but I'm sorry. Yes. Forgive me because this sister just told you and I'm explaining. It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look good. But your eyes being on the situation takes your eyes off of God. That's right. You can't look at the small victories. You can't look at waking up. You can't wake up looking at your feet and saying, guess what? I can walk. And if I can walk, I can run. And if I can run and I get tired, I can go back to walking. But guess what? There's mobility. I'm moving. And God is moving with me. This scripture, I love it because it offers the promise that God wants you to know. You will renew your, I'll renew your strength. Your strength will be revived. If you stop waiting, get back to waiting. Wait well. Wait on God. He knows what's best for you. Talk back to that thing like you used to quote the scriptures that got you through and carried you over. Carried you over. I'm sorry. Go back to re 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 repeating those scriptures. Go back to saying them. Yeah. The word of God is power. It is yeah, life. It is. Yes, it, is. it is meant to help you to realize that, <laughs> yes, though he slay me, I will put my whole trust in him. Yes. Though he's uh, not uh, visibly in my eyes, I know what he has for me is truly for me. I will regain strength. I will recover. I won't be weary. I won't faint. You won't do that. My brother, my sister, God loves you. He misses his time with you. Yes. Take your eyes off the clock today. Yes. Fix them and put them back on Jesus. Amen. The wait will be well worth it. Yes. This is my message for you. the words you just heard was a blessing to your soul. As the minister said, the wait is well worth it. How would you wait? There's growth in waiting. There's patience learned in waiting. There's strength in waiting. So remember, there's it's okay to wait. So if you're looking to learn more about, about God, come visit us. Information can be found at our website, hodchurch.com. If you would like someone to talk to or would like to receive prayer, please call 1-800-741-SOUL or 1-800-741-7685. We look forward to seeing you next week for another inspired message and messenger. Until then, don't forget, your soul matters. Amen.